How's it going? This is James from James Films, and today I'm going to show you how to convert your logo, any logo, into a cloud in Blender. It's a really simple process, and it gets some really good results. I did this recently for a client project I was working on, and I wanted to share you know, how it was broken down, how you can actually do this for yourself. So you can do this with any image. It's helpful to have you know one that's kind of like this already, where you've got some pieces isolated. You know, So we've got the different film reels and this body of the camera here. So I have this open in Photoshop first. If you don't have Photoshop, I know Photoshop's a bit expensive. There is a free alternative called PhotoP, which is basically the same exact program, but free and online in your web browser. So you can edit something in there. For the purpose of this, I'll just be using Photoshop, but the same uh, exact tools applied to PhotoP if you're using that as well. I've linked it in the description. So definitely check that out. So I have my layer open up here in Photoshop. And what I'm going to use is the magic wand tool. Uh, so it's this guy right here, and you're just going to click on the different parts of your logo, the different components. So first I'm going to click on this film reel here. I'm going to hold down shift. So you now you see a little plus sign next to the magic wand and that allowed me to select more objects to my current selection. And I'm just going to click on this other film reel, shift again, and then click on the main body of the camera. So now we have everything selected and you're just going to hit right click and you can go to, uh, make work path. So you click that and make work path, the tolerance, I uh, will leave that at two pixels, that's fine. And I'll just hit okay. So now you'll see it's kind of added in this almost like pen tool stroke type thing that you see around here, where it's actually has all these little individual points around our thing here. So this is making good progress. The next thing we actually need to do is go up to layer all the way up at the top here, go down to new fill layer, and then click on solid color. So we're gonna click on that guy uh, it doesn't really matter what you name it, it's fine. Just hit OK, and we're going to make this a uh, black color here. And we're just going to click OK. And now what you'll notice is it's made a new layer here that's got a shape layer actually attached to it. So this is exactly what we need. This is what we're going to be using to actually export this as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. And that's what we are going to import then into Blender. So at this point now, you can just hit File, and then go to Export, Export As. It's going to take a second here. And usually it will default to maybe like PNG or JPEG. What you're actually going to want is this SVG format here. So just hit SVG and then hit export. I've already exported this out. So I'm going to bring it over into Blender. Okay, so now I've got Blender fired up here. And I'm just going to delete these guys for now. Leave my camera. It's fine. And I'm going to go over to File and then Import. And you'll see that Blender has the option to import scalable vector graphics, SVG files. And that's what we just created over in Photoshop or PhotoP if you're using that. And import my file. So you're going to see it's not showing up here. It's really small. But the beauty of scalable vector graphics is that you can scale these up to infinity without losing any quality. So I'm just going to scale this guy up here. And let's just rotate it around so that it's kind of facing uh, in line with our viewport here. I'm just going to move this over to the origin area here, and that is looking good to me. So we've got our guy in here, and you'll notice that it's currently a, uh, not a layer that we want here. It's actually a spline, or a, I'm always forgetting what this is. I'm moving back and forth between Cinema 4D and Blender so much. It is now actually, uh, you know, a, a pen layer here. So we actually want this to uh, be not a shape layer, but actually a mesh. But just to kind of save this as a backup, what I'd like to do is hit Shift and A, Oops, sorry, not Shift-A, Shift-D. And so we're just going to click and just leave that there. And I'm going to hit M, add a new collection. We're just going to call this Backup, just so we have this just in case we make any mistakes with our original SVG, so we don't have to re-import it and do all that again. You can just click this here to exclude it from the view layer, and that's going to exclude it from both the viewport and the render. And it's just going to be in our Backup folder there, just in case we need it. So this, we actually want to convert into a mesh. So to do that, I'm going to go over to Object, convert to, and then mesh. So now we have this as a mesh. And if I just tap into edit mode to show you what this looks like, it is a mess. <laughs> you see, we've got all kinds of weird end guns here uh, in our screen, but we're going to fix this and then we're going to convert it into a cloud. But before I do that, I actually like to isolate each of these as their own layer. I think it's just the effect works a lot better if you have separated components instead of just this one cohesive mesh that you see here. So while you're in edit mode, you can just hit P and separate, and then separate by loose parts. And now what this is going to do is separate your logo into its components. Since they're not connected, since they're disjointed here, we get each of these three as separate parts. 
It's helpful to rename these so you don't have color fill one, color fill two, whatever. So I'm gonna name this the main body. This guy up here is my film reel left. And then this last guy is my film reel right. Okay, so if you were to do the effect right now, it wouldn't really work that well because these are flat planes. So we're gonna to wanna to actually add a little bit of geometry to these guys and then also fix those end guns that we see there. And there's two steps to do that. What I like to do is go over to my modifiers tab and then add in a solidify. So we're gonna be working off this top film reel here first. You can mess around this thickness to your desire. I mean, if you go a little bit too extreme, you see it's kind of a very long cloud. That could be an effect you're going for. But for these logos, I like to kind of keep it, you know, below 0.1, like usually around like 0.025 or something works pretty well. Uh, so then in addition to that, I'm gonna add a remesh uh, modifier below this guy. And you'll see it disappears, what happened? Well, I like to use the smooth one a bit better. You'll see that's kind of giving us something interesting here. But you can increase this octree depth to get a little bit more uh, geometry in there as well. And then you can also add in smooth shading if you want to. Uh, it's not necessary since this cloud's gonna be kind of smoothed out anyway. But now with that, we have these guys here. I like to generally apply these modifiers just so we have them on our geometry here. So we've got this film real right. So let's hide these other ones. I'm just gonna click them out of here for the viewport for now, just so we can isolate this one and start to do some initial shading and lighting with this. So to actually add in a cloud, CG Matter has a really great tutorial on how to do this with the latest version of Blender. And we're basically gonna be doing the same exact process here, uh, but just piecewise for each of our components. So I encourage you to check out this video. I've linked it in the description as well, if you wanna watch that. But for this, what we're gonna do is hit Shift A and then go to the volume and then make a new empty volume. So now let's just rename this just so it's not volume, volume one. You know, I always think it's helpful to name your layers. We're gonna call this film real right. Uh, let's actually call it film real right cloud here. Just so it's a little bit more unique from this <laughs> mesh that we have. So while you have our volume empty selected, add a new modifier and you're gonna hit the generate one, which is the mesh to volume. And for our mesh, we're obviously gonna wanna choose this mesh right here, this film reel. And now you'll see it's created this interesting you know, layer here with the cloud surrounding our mesh. It's a little bit blocky, the cloud, and let's just actually just turn this off from the viewport for now. You'll see it's a little bit blocky, the voxel size is a little bit low, and you can control that resolution uh, by this parameter right here. So it's currently defaulting at 32. Let's turn this up to something like 256. It's a little bit more intensive on your computer, but you're seeing you're getting a bit more uh, interesting result. But this cloud is incredibly smooth. You usually don't see clouds that are like perfectly sharp edges like this. Um, so in order to kind of smooth that out or to add some interesting deformations to it, we're gonna go to the add modifier and there's a second one here called volume displacer. And this can add some nice procedural effects using noise to this uh, initial volume that we're working with. So let's add in a new noise texture. Let's just turn the voxel amount down for a second just so our viewport's a little bit more responsive for now. I think it's helpful to kind of keep it low. And then when you're ready to, to chug out a final render, you can crank that up to 256 or something to get higher uh, samples for the voxels. So let's click on this little sliders tab here. And this will allow us to add in a type of noise. And I'm just gonna use the clouds one. I think that one works the best for this. And we'll see now we're starting to break this geometry up a bit. You're having some more interesting effects here. It's looking a little bit more cloud-like. You've got, kind of got some wispiness around the edges. And you can mess around with this size here to get different effects. So if I turn this up to one, it's a little bit more smoothed out. And if you turn this all the way down, let's put this at like 0.001, you'll see it's really very wispy here. Um, I like to leave this, you know, generally around like 0.1 or 0.2. I think that gives the best effects in general. And let's actually just turn on the viewport shading here. So we can actually add in a texture and kind of get a feel for what this is going to look like. I want to use cycles for this guy. You can use EV too. It's going to give you a similar result. The one difference with EV is that you're going to have to play a lot more in the volumetrics tab with your tile size. If you're going to want to have really nice volumetrics, you're going to want to turn the samples down to two pixels to have some better results. And you're going to also want to turn on your volumetric shadows uh, once you add in a light. Um, so let me just add in a light here in EV just to show you how this is operated first before switching over to cycles. So we've got this uh, guy in here. I'm just going to crank up the strength on the HDRI and I'm going to turn it off. Uh, from the viewport for now. So let me go back over to cycles because I just prefer cycles generally for this. So you're seeing now we have this cloud, but it doesn't currently have a texture on it actually. So we're gonna actually add in a texture to this and start messing around with the shading a little bit to get some better results. The beautiful thing about volumetrics in Blender is that if you have it selected, Blender automatically recognizes that it is a volume. So when you hit new to add in a new shader, 
it automatically plugs in this really nice principled volume node into the material output tab. And so we can mess around with a couple things in here. I don't really touch too many of these settings because I really don't feel like they do too much to change uh, the overall cloud. The main ones I change are density and color. And then over in your actual modifier tabs, the, the one to mess around with the most here is either your density or you know the size of that noise texture. I'm pretty happy with the, the uh, scaling of that noise texture for now, so I'm just gonna leave that as is. And I'm just gonna crank up the density. Let's put it at something like eight here. So now you're starting to see this is looking a little bit more interesting. You're having a little bit more puffiness to the surface here, a little bit more definition to the cloud. It looks a little bit sharper as well. Just for comparison, let's put it back to one again here. You'll see this is a little bit smoothed out, kind of washed out almost. You're not really seeing too much of that beautiful geometry that we've created with the noise texture. So just by turning up that density, uh, you see a lot more definition to the cloud. You'll notice that the cloud's a little bit dark. Um, and so what I like to do is actually crank up the color, uh, the brightness all the way up here. So now you'll see it looks a little bit puffier, a little bit whiter, uh, like a nice puffy white cloud floating in the sky here. Uh, keep in mind that the voxel size is pretty low for this. I'm still sampling a 256, so it looks a little bit blocky, but once we put it up on our final render, it'll be good to go and it'll look nice. You can adjust the density here if you want as well too, but I tend to leave this one the same and then just adjust the density over in the uh, mesh to volume modifier tab. You can also add a little bit of saturation to this too. You know, if you want a little bit of orange clouds, you can kind of bring this over as well. Just a little bit, just a hair, kind of gives it a very nice uh, look to it. You can also adjust the saturation just by these sliders here. Just add a very subtle bit of orange saturation to that. I think that makes it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so we got one cloud done here. I'm just going to turn this one off from the viewport for now. And let's attack these other ones. So we've got the left one and we've got this main body. Let's just start with the left one here. And I'm going to speed this up a bit here, just kind of go through, not really explain this as much because it's just the same exact process for all of these uh, to really get that nice result. So it's the same as always. We're going to solidify. We're going to add in a remesh modifier, smooth with an eight octree depth, shade smooth. I'm just gonna apply these guys here. So now we've got our uh, geometry applied and looking much better for this guy up here. So one thing that's also helpful too, let me go back over to this cloud and open up this texture here, is actually to name this noise texture. So let's just call this cloud noise, just so we have that, because we're gonna be applying that same noise texture to all of these just for uniformity. And let's also name this material and call it cloud. So now with this guy selected, I'm gonna actually add in a new empty as well. We're going to call this one the film real left cloud. Add in a new modifier for this one, mesh to volume. And for the object, we're going to want to select that film real left. We see we now have a cloud. The density I think we used for this one was four, if I'm not mistaken, or no, 12 actually. Let's crank this up to 12. And we're going to add in a volume displace. And then you don't actually need to click new. You can just hit this drop down here and just select that cloud noise. So now we have the same exact effect applied to this guy as well. I'm going to hide this from viewport for now. Hide this guy from viewport and let's just attack this main body. Same exact effect as before, solidify. 0.025, you're gonna kind of get a muscle memory to this once you're going through it. It becomes uh, pretty straightforward. And you know, you're just kind of doing this over and over and you can just mess around with this. This is always a push and pull effect too. I encourage you to, you know, experiment, have fun with this process and just see what works for you. It's different for every situation, um, but I think it's helpful to just play around with this effect and just see what you can get. So now we have the volume here as well. I'm just going to once again add mesh to volume, select this as the object, crank up that density, and then let's add in a volume displace. Oops, I gave it a new texture. I didn't need to do that. Let's just add in that cloud noise for this as well. Okay, so an important note about this. So let me open up these clouds again. So you'll see they're a little bit too clustered up here. Um, we're kind of losing a bit of that film reel since this is just kind of intersecting with our object here. And you might think like, oh, let me just click on this cloud here and pull it up and move it. Well, you'll see it's actually not gonna be moving it at all. You can't actually move these volumes here. Uh, traditionally, it, it kind of gives you some issues with that. Um, let me add that cloud material to these guys as well. So you'll see this in particular, it's really kind of blobby here. We're really losing that definition to our logo. This, you can't really tell that this is a camera. It just kind of looks like some kind of puffy mess. So I wanna separate these a bit more. In order to do that, you actually have to unhide these original displacements uh, or these original objects from your, your viewport. And then these are what you can actually move up. And this changes the location of that cloud by clicking on these objects. I'm not sure why you can't actually do it with the clouds, but you know this is the way to do it. So you can just kind of pull these guys up a bit here. 
Well, you'll see that looks kind of weird. You know, you still see the original object. So I always think it's helpful. Once you have a, a nice positioning set for these, I think it's helpful to turn them off um, from the viewport and the renders in your uh, visibility for all these guys. Okay, so now we've got a pretty nice looking logo. Um, but for these, you know, I'm going to turn up the voxel size a bit once I'm ready to go. I think I'm getting close to a final render here. So I'm just going to turn these up to 256 for each of these, just so we've got a really nice resolution for all of it. This is going to really slow down the viewport a bit. So just do this step, like I said, when you're really close to a final export. So we've got some nice looking clouds here. Uh, this is maybe a little bit too high position wise now that I'm seeing this. So let me just unhide both of these guys for a second here. I'm going to select both of them at the same time and let's just bring them down uh, a little bit. This is lagging quite a bit in the viewport because this is very, very high uh, density. So let me just actually go out of rendered for a second here and just bring these guys up a little bit. It's really quite laggy. There we go. That I think looks good to me. So now I'm going to hide these from the viewport uh, once again. And I think we got a nice final render here. So when lighting clouds, I have some tips. Actually, I made a video over my Patreon. I go into a lot more depth with this. But lighting in Blender for clouds is, I think, pretty important to get a good result because it kind of gives you good definition for the clouds. So what I usually like to do is have an HGRI to kind of give me some initial variation in color across the cloud. But then beyond that, I think it's helpful to actually add in a sun lamp uh, to give you some even more definition to these clouds and make it look a little bit more cloud-like. Let's crank up the intensity on this guy. It's starting at one by default. So if we put this up at like something like 25, you get a little bit more interesting results. At 75, it's even more interesting. And I encourage you to just kind of play around with this and just see what works for you and what works for the scene. So we got this kind of nice looking guy right here. Let me make this my camera viewport uh, view. And I'm going to split this viewport over here. I actually like my right one. I'm not sure why to be the camera view. I think that looks a little bit better. Let me just adjust the dimensions here to make this like a square box. Why don't we? And I'm going to just adjust the camera here just so we've got a nice final render going on. Okay. Let me make this 90 and let's just slide this over. Okay. Just, these are just adjusting the effects. Just so we've got a nice looking camera here just for our thumbnail <laughs> to show you guys. Okay, so now that we're in kind of the final steps here, getting this squared away looking nice, let's actually adjust the cloud a little bit more here. You can see we're kind of losing it, its definition a bit. Maybe that noise texture is a little bit too intense uh, for our volume displacer. So let me go up here and let's just increase the size a bit for this guy, maybe up to like 0.7 or something. That's looking a little bit better, a little bit more cloud-like, a little bit puffier. You see it's got some interesting results to it. Um, but maybe we want to increase the brightness a little bit of this too. Maybe the density is a little bit too high. Uh, so let me actually adjust the density in here. Let's bring this down to something like three. It's looking a little bit better. We're getting some nice results from that. And keep in mind, we'll have to adjust that for all of these guys. So if I bring this down to like a density of three as well, that's looking a lot more cloud-like as well. And that's looking really cool. I really like the effect that we're getting with this guy. Maybe we adjust the light just a little bit more. So it's covering more of our cloud. We've got this nice framing to it. And maybe we crank up the strength of our HDRI a bit more too. So this looks even better. So this is looking pretty awesome. But just a word about volumetrics, when you actually render these things out, um, it's going to really be important that you have enough samples so that you're not going to get noise. You'll see just even in the viewport here, we're only rendering this at 32 samples, mind you. Um, but once this kind of starts to calculate a bit more, there's going to be a lot of noise, especially in the shadows here. So you're going to want to turn up your samples to something manageable for your program, for your computer, um, but that will actually look really nice in your final render. So I usually try to go for something above a thousand. I think for these, if you can handle it, um, it just kind of kills the noise. It depends on your scene. Obviously, you, you can run a couple different tests of this to get different results. But I found that something over that tends to work pretty well. In the performance tab, if you're using GPU, it's helpful to have a very large tile size to speed up your renders even more. So I tend to use something uh, the highest possible tile size for your render. And that will give you some good results. So yeah, this is our final result here. I think this looks pretty cool. You know, it's a pretty quick step to get a really nice result here with your SVG file. You can do this with any logo. You can even do this with images if you'd want. But this just gives you a kind of an interesting effect. And you know, it's really nice. So hopefully you, you, you learned something from this. And let me know in the comments if you have ideas for other tutorials. I'm always looking for new things to do for you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>